It's been about a month since I got my Galaxy Buds live, and when I popped them in and listened to them for the first time, I was blown away. They seem to be the perfect blend between the previous Galaxy Buds and the AirPods, and I was certain that they would cause me to ditch my AirPods Pro. But after using them daily for a couple of weeks before starting to switch back and forth, I realized that I was wrong. In this review, I'm gonna cover all of the positives and also all of the negative things about these Buds and explain not only why I was wrong, but also why you should buy the Galaxy Buds Plus instead. Before we jump in, if you love what we do and you wanna support the channel, go ahead and check out our Max Tech shirts as well as the rest of the merch like our new premium zip up hoodie or our masks down in the merch shelf below. The most unique thing about these buds are definitely the bean shape. I was pretty surprised with the design and happy that Samsung chose to go a new direction with these buds instead of doing what uh, pretty much everybody else is. They look and feel amazing with a nice premium glossy finish and I love the gold color that they call bronze I think. They sit flush in your ear making it really easy to change your shirt or even put on a helmet with them on, whereas with the AirPods, it's very difficult or even impossible to do. Now, unlike the Buds Plus, these don't have an in-ear seal design, which will be pretty important and come into play later in this review. In terms of comfort, these are very comfortable. They fit perfectly in my ear and they're super easy to put in and take out. They also stay in very well and they don't fall out even if I shake my head. Take a look, they're not going anywhere. They're definitely more comfortable than the Buds Plus, and that's partially due to them not having that seal in design. The Buds Plus create pressure in your ear because of that seal, which can make them a little uncomfortable after a while. Now the AirPod Pros also have that seal in design, but they are extremely comfortable because of a little Valve Apple installed, which relieves that pressure. The Galaxy Buds Live doesn't have that issue. Now let's talk about the case. The Buds Live case has a new square design, so it's not as long as the previous Buds case, but it is a little wider and thicker. The case size is pretty convenient, but I think that the old case design might be a little more comfortable uh, in your pocket, especially for people that have smaller pockets. Getting into charging and battery life, the case itself uses wireless charging or USB Type-C to charge. Now, without active noise cancellation, they have a total runtime of 28 hours, which is great. And for comparison, the Buds Plus was rated at 22. Now the actual buds themselves are rated between 6 to 8 hours depending on the setting instead of an advertised 11 hours for the Buds Plus. When I first got these, that seemed to be quite a big drop in battery life, but that's actually because the Buds Plus default to their normal mode, which is fairly quiet. I like to use those in the dynamic mode, which drops the battery life to about eight to nine hours because they get louder and they sound a lot better there. With these lives, they actually sound perfect and fantastic in the normal mode, so the real world battery life was about five to six hours. Throughout all the time that I used use them, I never felt limited by the battery life. And on top of that, they charge really quickly. Just five minutes will give you over half hour of listening. Now getting more into sound quality, the lives blew me away. They are very loud, which I love because it really helps with that unsealed design. And if you're listening to quieter podcasts or videos, it's great to have that extra room to boost the volume. The bass is deeper and richer sounding than the previous buds, likely because of the large 12 millimeter drivers. The highs are very crisp and they sound great. Now, sound quality is obviously subjective, but to me, these are the best sounding earbuds that I've ever tried, even beating out the AirPod Pros and those really nice Sony WF 100 or 1000 XM3s, that's way too long of a name. Now for some people, the bass and the highs might be a little bit too much, but you can of course tune that using the settings in the app. Not only that, but they work very well with my iPhone. They pair quickly and consistently every single time, and they're actually a little bit louder using the iPhone than using my Note 20. Onto microphone quality. In Samsung's keynote, they said that they have greatly improved the microphone quality since the Buds Plus, and I could say that that is definitely true. My wife had no issue hearing me when she actually did complain about the previous Buds, but the AirPods are still ahead. Take a listen for yourself. This is the microphone quality with the Galaxy Buds Live. And this is the microphone quality with Apple's AirPods Pro. The difference is noticeable, but it isn't huge. So for most people, the Buds Live will do a good enough job and that won't be a complaint. 
Now let's get into the drawback of these buds that made me change my mind about them. As I mentioned earlier, the Buds Alive have an open ear design unlike the previous Buds Plus, which have that seal in. Because of that, there is a shocking amount of sound leakage, quite a bit more than even the original AirPods due to all the vents and it doesn't help that they get so loud. With that, if you don't want people to hear your music, you have to turn them down so much so that the outside noises start creeping in and are very apparent, pretty much like open back headphones if you've ever used those. Now, if you don't like sharing your music with everybody else, I would say these are not for you. It's very interesting that these Buds Live are the first open earbuds in Samsung's line because they're also the first to include active noise cancellation. Now that doesn't make much sense because you can't seal out noise, so how would the active noise cancellation even work well? That was my biggest concern when I first read the specs with these, and that's the thing. After using these, I could definitely say that it doesn't work well at all. It only removes some lower frequency sounds, leaving all the mid and high frequency noises. When I was using these buds, they did a pretty good job of getting rid of the low frequency sound from the always on furnace next door to us but at the same time, I started to notice the higher pitch sounds from the air flowing through the vents above, and that was even more annoying, so I turned the active noise cancellation off. I was still optimistic though, and thought that they would work better for other environments, but as soon as I took them home and tried using them while mowing the lawn, I was disappointed. The active noise cancellation didn't do anything. There was absolutely zero difference, and I struggled to hear the podcast while mowing my lawn. And the whole time, I was really wishing that I had taken my Buds Plus or even the AirPods Pro with me. I then tested while vacuuming and the active noise cancellation barely changed the sound. So going forward, I found myself having to switch between using my Buds Live for listening to music and my AirPod Pros anytime I needed noise cancellation. Now obviously that is not convenient and on top of that, most people can't and won't buy two sets. That's the thing, a good set of wireless earbuds need to meet a wide range of needs. And even though the Buds Live have really great sound quality, and they have good battery life, and they have improved microphones, and they look great, the fact that the advertised active noise cancellation is so terrible really makes it a deal breaker for me. The Buds Plus didn't have active noise cancellation, but the seal design meant that they were passive, and that worked really well. So with that, I really wish that Samsung made the Lives a seal design as well, but retaining this shape. The active noise cancellation would work great and the sound quality and mics would still be just as good. With that, sound leakage would be greatly reduced and they would be a fantastic, unique set of buds that would work for almost anyone. At this point, the Galaxy Buds Plus don't look as good and they're not flush, but they are a lot more versatile and they can be bought for a fair bit less money. Yes, the mics don't sound as good, but they are usable and as far as audio quality, they still sound really Really good. No, they don't sound as good. They're not shockingly great, but most people that haven't tried the lives will be very happy with the sound quality. So unless you need the flush fit or you want that open design that leaks sound and lets in noise, I think that most people will be better off buying the older Galaxy Buds Plus. Of course, you can spend more money and get the AirPod Pros, which are more comfortable than either one of these, and they have better mics than other, uh, both of these, and they have better uh, noise blockage and cancellation with the active system, but they do sound worse and they do cost a lot of money. Whatever you guys decide to do, I'll leave links down below where you guys can score some great deals, especially on the Galaxy Buds Plus. Let me know which one you end up deciding to go with. If you enjoyed this video, tap that like button and click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. And make sure to check out one of those two videos over there, especially the comparison between these two. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.